Good morning to all and welcome to the session, the Hindu Editorial Analysis for Proficients in English. Before we start the session, or let us start the session with a nice quote. What is, what is today's quote? It doesn't matter where you come from. All that matters is where you go. It doesn't matter where you come from. The roots are not very important. What matters, success point of view. All that matters is where you go. A very useful quote. And today's editorial is all about uh, Oscar awards. That is one thing on the one hand. On the other hand, it is about uh, an altercation between two Hollywood actors. One is uh, Will Smith. The other one is Rock. So it deals with two different dimensions. One, it deals with the awards, recent uh, event. And the other dimension, it deals with the altercation between two Hollywood actors. This editorial, a lot of words are there, and some of them are new words. There's something to learn. Besides the editorial analysis, today you're going to work on errors, misspelled words, and uh, scrambled sentences. As usual, idioms and editorial words. Now let us go to the vocabulary part from the editorial. Usually, the first one is toxic. Usually the word toxic goes with uh, chemicals and uh, whenever we talk about environment, we use the word toxic fumes, toxic gases. Toxic means what? Part of speech, adjective. Uh, lack of time, I could not enter, but I'll write here. Toxic, very unpleasant or unacceptable. One meaning in this context, but generally the word toxic means poisonous, toxic gases poisonous, harmful, deleterious, all these words you have to think of. Applause, it is a new word, but I'm, sh I'm sure you all know. He got, a, he got a lot of applause. People applauded. Means what? Approval or praise expressed by clapping. When someone does something, usually this goes with show business. Someone does something on stage, people clap a lot. Then we say he received a lot of tremendous applause from the audience standing ovation the next level first level is applause next level is a standing ovation a period of prolonged applause during which the crowd or audience rise to their feet usually you sit and clap that is applause but uh, you like something a lot then you stand up and clap for a long time then we say he got or he received a standing ovation. These two go hand in hand. They go with the show business. Sweep off. You all know the word sweep, using a broomstick and cleaning a room. But here it is a phrasal verb. Sweep off means what? Overwhelm emotionally. Something makes a tremendous impact. That is known as sweep off. Altercation, an important word. A noisy argument or disagreement, especially in public. In private, we don't use the word altercation. Generally, it goes with a bitter argument, acrim acrimonious argument, a noisy argument or disagreement, especially in public. Neo means rich. There are three prefixes. One is a paleo. Paleo means a old. Meso. Meso means middle. Neo means new. Usually, these uh, prefixes go with the Stone Age. We use terms like uh, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic. Lithic means related to stones. Old Stone Age, New Stone Age, uh, Middle Stone Age, and New Stone Age. But in this context, Neo-Western, Neo-Rich. There's one typical combination, Neo-Rich. Means those who have become rich in the recent past. This we have got for the first time. Eponymous, we haven't got so far. I'm sure about that. Of a thing named after a particular person or group a particular thing is named after a person usually or a group then we use the word eponymous do remember an important word and uh, here applause noun it could be applaud is a verb standing ovation noun it's a phrase sweep off a phrasal verb altercation noun and neo prefix it could be adjective neo rich and uh, eponymous 
this is also an adjective confrontation is a noun and there's one thing here in this editorial besides the meanings you can also think of something important from exam point of view uh, when it comes to redundancy redundancy means what unnecessary use of words this is one example a lot of people tend to say direct confrontation that is not correct never use the word direct before confrontation confrontation itself means a hostile or argumentative situation or meeting between opposing parties common error direct confrontation there's nothing like indirect confrontation do remember don't use the word direct before confrontation come of age an important idiomatic expression someone has come of age or something has come of age or a particular industry has come of age means what become fully established today if you take uh, it it sector has come of age one example you can think of closeted it's an important word we have got for the first time keeping something secret especially the fact of being a gay gay means homosexual so closeted keeping something secret especially the fact of being gay there are three slides uh, two slides in fact exquisite i use this uh, regular classes offline uh, adjective an important adjective usually it goes with uh, paintings and sculptures other combinations are acceptable extremely beautiful and delicate one meaning in this context intensely felt something is felt intensely then we use the word exquisite but a uh, general combination or typical combination exquisite paintings exquisite sculptures and also exquisite dishes sometimes we do use that uh, expression something that is made beautifully intricately extremely beautiful and delicate and you should always remember exquisite when i say these are the combinations it means what you cannot use with other combinations here it means extremely beautiful you cannot say exquisite woman exquisite girl that is a wrong combination you have to learn english is a combinational language there are word combinations we use a technical term collocations so recombinations are very important when it comes to close test when it comes to fillers this knowledge helps a lot adaptation yesterday we had a discussion not discussion but someone said there was a question rba assistant the difference between the three words you have to recollect one is adapt second is adopt third is adapt adapt typical meaning to get used to but here adaptation noun exquisite adjective and adaptation noun but as a noun in this context what does it mean a film television drama or stage play that has been adapted from a written work a written work is taken a book is taken and uh, they try to modify they modify that they try to change adapt to the screen then we use the word adaptation of a particular book fiction this goes with english novels usually i tell students when it comes to conversation english to read uh, novels a lot of people say if someone says they want to become good at uh, conversation english they give the suggestion i read uh, the hindu paper that's a wrong suggestion the hindu paper deals with effective english and written english but conversational english is different and if you ask me sir how to become good at conversational english or so called expression spoken english then i will say read english novels especially fiction so english novels are of two types fiction and non fiction fiction means what literature in the form of prose especially novels that describes imaginary events and people fiction novels like uh, typical movies hero hero and villain imagination someone's imagination fiction non fiction novels based on facts and uh, real incidents now yak is an animal so obviously it has to be a noun it can be a verb as a verb the meaning changes but here yak a noun a type of cattle with long hair and long horns found mainly in tibet it goes with tibet himalayan region a rancher this goes with the us and australia a rancher first you have to know the meaning of the word a ranch one who manages a ranch is known as a rancher 
a large farm, especially in North America, as I said, or Australia, where cattle or other animals are bred. It goes with breeding of cattle. A rancher, obviously a person, noun. Delightful. Delightful means what? It's a positive word. Causing delight means pleasure or charming, attractive. It's a completely positive word. Nomad is a noun and delightful appearance. Uh, you can say it is an adjective, but delight is a noun. Nomad is an important word, especially bank exams a few times, but SLC, they have given many a time. Nomad, one word substitute. Usually a person or a family lives at a particular place. A residence is permanent, but some people, especially tribal people in the past, and now also a few are there. A typical example, gypsies, exactly. Gypsies and Lombardies also. Nomadic means a member of a people that travels from place to place to find fresh pasture for its animals and has no permanent home. You don't have to remember all this. Nomad means a person without a permanent home or a person who moves from one place to another place regularly. Put down is a phrasal verb. To bring to an end or stop. Put down something, an argument, a fight. Means what? Bring to an end. Spit, spat, spat as a verb. But here it has a different meaning. Spit something to take out from the mouth, the liquid or, and uh, juicy stuff. But here, spit, spat, spat, that is a different thing altogether. Here, spat, a noun, means what? A short argument usually about something that is not important. Something that is not important, you have to think of the word trivial silly not that important or petty so spat an argument not that important show business there's a saying in english what is it there's no business like show business one popular expression there's no business like show business and also the show must go on the show must go on migration is different nomad is different migration moving from one place to another place and permanently Someone has a problem in his own country, her own country. That person goes from that country to another country. Then we use the word migration. But usually there are two terms, emigration and immigration. But migration goes with uh, people, rarely animals usually. Animal migration, bird migration. Whereas nomads goes with people, only with people. And these people are usually, they don't have permanent houses. They move from one place to another place. So we use the word nomads or nomadic in nature. Completely different. They are nowhere related. You can say nomads also migrate, but periodically, regularly. That is important. Uh, show business, the theater. Theater means what dramas, plays, mime shows, whatever happens on stage. The theater, films, television, and pop music as a profession or industry. We use the show business. Show business, million dollar industry. Now let us go to the editorial. So many words and it has taken almost 14 minutes. The power of the man on toxic masculinity at Oscars. This goes with the power of the man. At the outset, it starts with the power of the man. Usually it is considered, but not correct. And it's a general perception. Men are powerful. The power of the man, you cannot make out what exactly it deals with or, or the editorial is about. But on toxic masculinity at Oscars, there's one word, toxic, means what? Very unpleasant or unacceptable in this context. Poisonous, harmful, deleterious, dangerous. These are the words usually associated with the word toxic. But here, on toxic masculinity at Oscars, at Oscars here means at the function, usually Oscar awards, a big function, and all the top stars from Hollywood across the world attend different fields related to the film industry, a major event when it comes to show business. And uh, something happened, something went wrong. There's one actor, Will Smith, a very popular actor. He slapped his uh, another comedian come actor, Rock, on stage in public entire world was watching so that was a toxic incident masculinity punching someone slapping someone uh, in a way symbol of masculinity in public that too so toxic masculinity at oscars as i said this editorial talks about 
or is about an unpleasant toxic event showing the power of man in public one thing it also touches because it was an event it is all about an event it touches the actual dimension it has to talk about the awards and it uh, deals with the awards who won the awards all those aspects masculinity when it comes to yes i'm going to talk about that when it comes to gender in english when it comes to nouns we have different dimensions one of the dimensions nouns gender gender denotes male or female and when it comes to types of gender they are four in number masculine gender denotes male feminine gender denotes female and common gender either male or female the last one is very important from the exam point of view neuter gender a lot of people think neutral it is not neutral it is neuter gender neuter gender neither male nor female then you may ask sir why is it important from the exam point of view or how is it important usually neuter gender goes with things or objects like pen pencil notebook we use a pronoun it we cannot use a masculine gender we cannot use a feminine gender but english people when they saw certain things they were awestruck they were impressed so anything that expresses power and strength they attributed the masculine gender example sun summer winter time death and anything that expresses beauty and grace they attributed feminine gender examples nature earth moon uh, two seasons are very important spring and autumn this is what you have to recollect and very important from the exam point of view the relevance of movies dealing with toxic masculinity was in evidence at the oscars again the main idea it talks about the relevance of movies dealing with toxic masculinity this part this year when it comes to oscar awards there's one movie the power of the dog winning only one of its 12 nominations and also it deals with uh, the toxic masculinity here it talks about something negative toxic masculinity and this sentence says the relevance of that movie the relevance of that movie or in general a general statement the relevance of movies dealing with toxic masculinity was in evidence at the oscars how was it evidence if you ask the question the altercation between will smith and rock it was uh, in a way goes with the toxic masculinity shown in movies everything from the power of the dog winning only one of its 12 nominations to the silent applause and standing ovation for troy kotsur's best supporting actor win in coda was swept off the table in the face of will smith's altercation with chris rock now a lengthy sentence but uh, in a nutshell it talks about uh, the altercation the main idea of the sentence altercation between two hollywood actors one being will smith the other one chris rock there are three or four words over here you i think five words you have to know the meanings and they are important applause very applause approval or praise expressed by clapping you sit and clap that is applause standing ovation you are impressed something you find something overwhelming and uh, impact making then you stand up you clap for a long time then we use the expression he received or he got standing ovation then swept off we all know the word sweep sweep off but here swept off it is a phrasal verb means overwhelm emotionally or remove the impact of something else then altercation a noisy argument or disagreement especially in public so all the words are important as i said this deals with on the one hand it deals with the awards the a few movies have got the awards actors and all those people on the other hand it talks about the altercation between two hollywood actors and this sentence talks about the actual event why it happened and what was the stimulus what triggered incited will smith to go on to the stage and slap chris rock smith who went on to win the best actor award for his role as richard williams in king richard slapped rock in public slapped rock in public it's understood when the actor and comedian made a joke about smith's wife jada pinkett smith's hair loss 
So the actual reason for going on to stage and slapping Rock, this Rock, and another Hollywood actor and comedian, made a joke about Smith's wife in public that too. Uh, Smith's wife jarred up Pinkett Smith's hair loss, about her hair loss. So this is the actual event that triggered, the comment triggered. They're easy to understand. Smith, who went on to win the Best Actor Award for his role as Richard Williams in King Richard, slapped Rock when the actor, why did he slap Rock when the actor and comedian made a joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith's hair loss? The new Western, this sentence talks about the movie. The neo Western, there's one important expression. Generally, we use neo rich. Neo rich means some people they have become very rich in the recent past. To those people, we use the expression neo rich. But here, neo Western, new Western. The neo Western, the power of the dog, based on Thomas Savage's eponymous novel, an important word we have got for the first time. Eponymous means what? Named after a particular person or group. That a particular person or group, but usually a particular person. The power of the dog based on Thomas Savage. Savage, name of a person in this context, but actually the word savage means beast-like, uncivilized, savage, barbaric. All these words you have to recollect. But here it is a name of a person. Thomas Savage's eponymous novel, apart from other things, deals with this power of the dog movie, deals with what? Toxic masculinity, the main idea of this editorial, which is what the Smith Rock confrontation was at one level. On the one hand, the movie deals with toxic masculinity, uh, masculinity at the same time on stage, confrontation between Smith and Rock at the same level or at one level. So, confrontation, as I said, uh, a hostile or argumentative situation or meeting between two opposing parties. But what is important, confrontation, coming face to face, a uh, hostile environment. But whenever you read the Hindu paper or you attend a session that deals with uh, mock test paper explanation, try to look beyond a particular word, try to look beyond a particular question. Ask yourself all the time, what else can I recollect? What else can I learn from this word, from this sentence or from this question? And that is, in my opinion, smart learning. Confrontation, simply you think of the meaning. It is not uh, smart learning, in my opinion. But immediately you have, I'm sure you have learned, uh, my students usually they know. A redundancy, one of the examples, direct confrontation, not correct. Confrontation is always direct. We cannot say direct confrontation. That you have to recollect. You may ask, sir, what is the benefit when we recollect related information or the related words? In a way, you are consolidating your knowledge. When it comes to competitive exams, learning is a prerequisite. It has to happen, inevitable, and the starting point. But besides learning and understanding what matters when it comes to competitive exams, consolidation matters a lot. What is this consolidation? Strengthening. You may ask, sir, what happens when we don't consolidate? We don't try to consolidate. Now you remember after some time you forget. In the exam, though you have learned, you have already learned, you may not be able to recollect and you may not be able to answer the question. But if you consolidate whatever you learn in the exam within no time, you will be able to answer the questions. So consolidation is very important when it comes to competitive exams. When you recollect, in a way you're consolidating your knowledge was at one level. In other Oscar news, the heartwarming coming of age story, come of age, an important expression, come of age means what? Uh, become mature, one meaning, become fully established. It goes with a movement or activity or a company or an organization or a person, anything for that matter, come of age, become fully established and accepted. Now, after that, it is not that important because we cannot relate in the sense you people, you are all busy preparing for competitive exams. I don't think you have heard of all these movies and uh, there's no time for guys who are focusing on career progress to know all these movies names and they might not have heard, they might not have seen. But still, I will read out and some of these are not uh, familiar terms, uh, names of the names of directors or actors or names of the movies. 
Denis Villeneuve's exquisite adaptation. Exquisite, an important word, means what? Extremely beautiful and delicate, one meaning, and intensely felt in this context. Adaptation of Frank Herbert's science fiction classic, June. Adaptation, you take a written work and you try to make a few changes here and there based on the film industry or the audience, taste of the audience. Then we use the adaptation of a particular book or written work of Frank Herbert's science fiction classic, fiction, something imaginary, not real, and class, science fiction classic, June. Sand dunes, you have to recollect, June. Oh, some of you have watched, uh, that's really good, seen those movies. Dune, sand dunes. When you go to a desert, you come across sand dunes that you have to recollect. Won the maximum awards. Of the 10 nominations, June part one, as it is titled on screen, won six. Out of 10 nominations, they got 10. So one maximum number of awards. The Golden Man went to Hans Zimmer's score, sound, editing, visual effects, cinematography, and production design. Drive My Car from Japan, co-written and directed by Rusk Hamaguchi, had four nominations, which it won ahead of Polo Sorrentino's Intensely Personal, The Hand of God from Italy, and Bhutan's Lunana, A Yak in the Classroom. All these in the foreign movies category, one from uh, it is from Italy, another from Tibet. And uh, th the one that got four nominations and four awards from Japan, foreign movies, movies from other countries category. It talks about that. There's one word, yak. Yak means what? A type of cattle with long hair and long horns found mainly in Tibet, used for transportation. It is also known as a beast of burden. It carries a lot of load beast of burden smith's fellow nominees for the best actor included benedict cumberbatch as a closeted closeted an important word means what keeping something secret especially the fact of being gay conflicted rancher a ranch means a large farm especially in north america or australia where cattle or other animals are bred in the power of the dog J javier burdens Eye-popping turn as they see Arnaz in Aaron Sorkin's Being the Ricardos, Andrew Garfield as Jonathan Larson in Lynn Manuel Miranda's biographical musical Tick Tick Boom, and Denzel Washington as Macbeth in Joel Cohen's Black and White Take on the Tragedy of Macbeth. This is all about the movies and the actors, co those who have been nominated uh, for the Best Actor Award. Jessica Chastian's win in the Best Actress category for The Eyes of Tammy Faye faced some stiff competition, an important expression, stiff competition, severe competition, from Olivia Colman in Maggie Gellin Hall's The Lost Daughter and Kristen Stewart as Lady Diana in Spencer. This is about the female actor, Best Female Actor category, actress. Usually now people are using actor but traditionally, actor, actress, we all know that, but it has become modern English or current English. They are using actor for actress. The supporting actress category was also closely fought with Ariana D. Bose from West Side Story, winning against Jesse Buckley, the lost daughter, Judy Dench, Belfast, Kristen Dunst, the power of the dog, and Anjani Ellis King Richard. Again, different actors and the names of movies. Paul Thomas Anderson's delightfully comforting Licorice Pizza was yet another coming of age film with a strong presence at the nomination stage, but did not win. A lot of nominations, but did not win. There's one important word over here, delightfully. Delightful means what? Something that gives pleasure, immense pleasure, causing delight, pleasure, and also charming, something attractive. While Jane Campion's Best Director win for The Power of the Dog follows, Close Zavos win last year for Nomad Land. Nomad means moving from people who move from one place to another place. Making her the second woman to win in as many years means after a long time. An important expression. The Smith Rock spat, another important word, spat, as a verb, a different meaning. Here it is a noun. Spat means what? A short argument, usually about something that is not important. 
uh, the spat between Smith and Rock, Smith Rock spat, proves that there are miles to go. Another important expression, miles to go, means a long way to go before show business could become could come of age. Miles to go means a long way to go before show business could come of age. Come of age means to become fully established, to become mature, to reach adulthood. Because of the spat, show business, one important expression, anything that goes with films, theater, movies, uh, films, uh, theater, television, or pop music, we use the expression show business. And there's one important expression, there's no business like show business. How does it end? Bad jokes, like bad cinema, are best ignored. So it means it is better to ignore bad jokes like bad cinema and not put down with violence, put down, bring to an end with violence. In this context, he could have ignored, the editorial says, ends on the note. So Will Smith should have ignored or should, should have kept quiet because a bad joke, a bad cinema, best, it is better to ignore those instead of resorting to violence and not put on with violence. That's what he did. This is all about the editorial, a bit difficult to comprehend in the sense, uh, names of movies, names of actors, not familiar, and very difficult to pronounce. You have to spend a lot of time. I'm not quite sure how many of them I have pronounced properly. You have to spend some time and you have to listen very carefully because some of these names go with uh, different countries and different cultures. Only if you spend time, you come to know how to pronounce each uh, word. Names of people depends on the country, depends on the culture. If you spend some time, you understand how to pronounce the name of a particular person. He or she does not belong to your country. It happens when a foreigner comes to India. There are so many Indian names. Usually what happens, they mispronounce because Indian names Based on the spelling, if you try to pronounce, you may not get the correct pronunciation. For example, if you take uh, R-A-M-A, R-A-M-A, it could be Rama, it could be Rama. So based on the context, we know we are referring to a girl, we use the word, we say Rama. We are referring to God, we say Rama. So I will continue. Please, one day I don't take, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. Who is this Varun? Yesterday I could not take, do remember all of you, we are not machines here. Personal emergencies uh, and technical problems, important meetings. There are so many things I'm supposed to do, important commitments. Once I may not take the session, twice I may not take the session. It doesn't mean that I'm going to discontinue. Please don't think that way. I left a message. That's why I tell students to join the Telegram group. I said no session last evening, 200 rules. One day I don't take. You can't say, sir, don't take, don't take, uh, don't uh, skip the classes. You can't say, don't uh, please continue. You can't say, I don't see consistency. All these are unpleasant words and not acceptable. Have patience. One day, one week, sometimes one week I may not take. Does it mean uh, important work? Uh, is, imagine some important work or personal emergency. I don't take for one week. Does it mean I'm not regular? Does it mean there's no consistency? Does it mean we are not committed? These are not the things I, I don't accept. Please don't use all these expressions. Have patience. You can't expect we are not machines to work round the clock, 24 into seven. Faculty members are also educators are human beings. They have their own commitments. Uh, it's a request from my side. Please don't use all these expressions. I personally, not a good thing. It does not, does not leave a good impression. It's okay, fine. I, I understand your enthusiasm. I understand your passion to learn. On the one side, that is really appreciable. You are keen to learn, but should have patience and should feel, okay, today perhaps he was busy or yesterday he was busy. Because of that, he could not take. That is understanding. Thank you very much. So what is this editorial about? What was in evidence at the Oscars? What was in evidence at the Oscars? It starts with that something was in evidence at the Oscars. Easy to answer. What was swept off the table in the face of Will Smith's altercation with Chris Rock? Easy to answer. And uh, which movie deals with toxic masculinity? Toxic masculinity. It's all about that.
easy to answer. Which movie won the maximum awards? Any editorial like this, that, or any editorial for that matter, deals with, imagine it deals with uh, statistical data or facts. Questions are easy to answer, very easy to answer. It may be lengthy, it doesn't matter. Now let us go to, it is your time to respond. You have been listening, now you have to respond. Practice questions based on exam topics. First five questions, error location, you got to read meticulously. Neither easy nor difficult. It all depends on how you read. So please read the first one and tell me where the error is. A small piece of bread is better than having nothing to eat. Yes, in a way you are right. Spat, the word spat came in RBA exam. Oh. oh, thank you very much, Manoj. A small piece of bread. No, here small piece of bread, piece can be used. Loaf of bread goes with the whole thing. Imagine, I'm not an artist, a bread is taken and it's cut into pieces. The whole thing is called a loaf, loaf of bread, loaf of bread. L-O-A-F, loaf of bread. The whole thing is called loaf of bread. Who is this? I see uh, Kumar, Prasad and some more students, Raghu also, no error. Answer is a fifth option, no error. A piece of small piece of bread. There is one adjective also, a small piece. A small piece of bread is better than having nothing to eat. No error whatsoever. Perfect. Grammatically, contextually. Very good. Do respect the fifth option. Families are fortunate enough to own a house in the city. Are very few. Having nothing to eat. Nothing wrong with that Nagamani. They have nothing to eat. Here it talks about having nothing to eat. It's a standard expression, not the regular position. Here it talks about a state of being. You can use in ING form. I appreciate that, but nothing wrong with that. They have nothing to eat. That's a standard expression. Having nothing to eat, nothing wrong with that. Uh, yes, who is this? Bharat has got it right. Uh, in a way, there's an error in the very first part. Here we have a verb, are, families are. There's one more verb, are very few. You cannot use the verb are two times, the primary auxiliary are, be, two times. This is not required. Families, fortunate enough to own a house in the city, are very few. When we say that, it's understood. Families that are fortunate enough to own, that's understood. So here we don't have to use the verb are in the first part. Strike it off. Families fortunate enough to own a house in the city. Here, this is not required because are is there. Are very few, not too many. You can use that also. Families that are fortunate enough. There are two ways of looking at it. Yes. But you don't have to add any word, simply strike off the primary auxiliary or the helping verb are. There ends the matter. It is nothing but redundancy. Families fortunate enough, that's enough. Not always, not always. Who is this? Prasads are very few. When we use, there's one adverb over here, very few. You don't have to think of the rule, a few. Very few has a different connotation. Very few means what it talks about, not too many. Very few is a phrase that is different. And the rule that goes with few, a few, the few, it is not applicable over here. That's what I tell students when it comes to English, never ever try to have fixed ideas. Keep everything open. And when you learn, get exposed to the language, how do you get exposed? Read the Hindu paper. 
you understand all these subtle differences subtle differences sometimes we use we say we have to use a definite article the before something and sometimes you come across you don't see the definite article the because any language is an ocean we cannot simply take something for granted have a fixed idea and every time we cannot say it should be a few or the few very few that's a different phrase with a different meaning altogether and here a lot of students get confused between using because and also because of because then you use a phrase uh, usually we use a clause he came late because it rained he came late because he could not get the bus clause has to be used because of you have to use a noun or a noun phrase he could not come in time because of rain because of rain but look at the, now based on this look at the sentence read the sentence though i had been his friend for quite a long time i refused to help him because his ill nature no it has to be because of because of what his ill nature it's a noun phrase uh, because of his ill nature then it is correct because he behaves rudely he behaves rudely clause clause use because noun or noun phrase then you use because of as a question because of what because of heavy rain because of his bad behavior because of his ill nature so this subtle difference is again very important where to use because where to use because of please go to question number 4 because of his poor health yes another expression we use regularly while he had been walking along the road a wild and ferocious dog ferocious aggressive ready to attack hit him hard and knocked him down usually dogs don't hit they bite because of raining ha huh? because it was raining yes go over then because of her delay yes it would have been better he missed the bus very good ragu has got it right this is an important question in my opinion you may ask sir why there is again there is a difference between when to use past continuous when to use past perfect continuous this is not easy to make out under pressure we use past perfect continuous if at all we have to use we use when there is a time period time period use past perfect continuous tense there is no time period then you have to use past continuous while he had been walking for 2 hours imagine for 2 hours that is a time period the sentence would have been correct but here you don't see the time period and what does the context talk about something happened in the past for that we should use past tense hit him hard and knocked him down they are in past that time something was going on for that we should use past continuous because there is no time period we should use past continuous but here you see past perfect continuous which is not correct while he was walking something happened he was hit and knocked down when were, when did it happen while something was going on what was going on he was walking along the road so it is a combination of past continuous tense plus past tense then how do you know whether to use past continuous or past continuous based on the time period you see the time period use past past perfect continuous once in sba exam they gave a question she was teaching for 2 years when he met her answer my question is the sentence right or wrong she was teaching physics for 2 years when he met her is the sentence right or wrong given in sbi she was teaching physics for 2 years when he met her no one has responded it is wrong why is it wrong here we have the time period for 2 years because 2 years we cannot use past continuous we should use past perfect continuous 
What is the correct sentence? Yes, wrong, very good. What is the correct sentence? She had been teaching physics for two years when he met her, then it is correct. She had been teaching physics for two years. Two years makes all the difference. Please go to question number five, the last one. Oh, wonderful. Who is this Pavani? Congratulations. Very good. Glad to know that. Anyone else? Mm, very good. She had been teaching so many students. Wonderful. Now let us go to question number five. I am grateful to you and all your friends for showing sympathy and kindness with me. Yes, Prasad, you are right. Here, not uh, on me, showing sympathy, that is one thing. And kindness, kindness we don't use on, kindness to me. Show kindness to someone. To is appropriate preposition, not on, to. Show kindness to me. Show sympathy on someone, but show kindness to someone. Now let us go to, who is this Manoj? Very good. Congratulations. That's good. Towards also you can use kindness to me, kindness towards me. Both are correct. Here I have brought uh, five questions based on misspelled words. Some of these, you may ask, sir, why have you brought uh, these words? The words are very important. Some of the words you can learn besides spellings. The words are important. They come on, they go with effective English. First, you try to find out the error, the word with wrong spelling. Accessible, what is the spelling of accessible? Double C, double S, one S is missing. Access, access to something, access, accessible. Access to something, to be able to reach. Access to power, access to authority, access to resources, access to information, access to money. Barricade. Something that stops people. Imagine police. Usually it goes with police. Police have erected barricades. Means what blocks? They stop people from going beyond a particular spot. That is known as barricade. Checkmate. It goes with uh, chess. Checkmate. The game is over. Equilibrium. Balance. Nothing wrong with these words. So answer is the fourth option. Accessible. It takes a preposition to. Very good, Ramesh. You have to recollect that. That's why I've given so many examples. Access to power, access to authority, access to the prime minister. Blockade, yes. Barricade, blockade. Very good. Go to the second one based on misspelled words. Providential. Satellite. Precedence, sweet meat. These questions here, they may look uh, easy, but under pressure, they are not easy. Once you are tensed up, it becomes a little difficult. Yes. What is the meaning of Satellite, what is the spelling? Please give me a second. Mm. Yes. It is not correct, obviously. Easy to make out. Satellite. Satellite. So providential, at the right time, meaning of that, at the right time. Precedence, something that happens before precedent. It happens to a lot of people. I know a lot of brilliant students. Sometimes what happens, one year hard work, that's what I tell students, 
while taking the, taking the exam you have to be composed this is very important your mindset mindset at the time of the exam during the exam very important once you are disturbed once you panic once you are agitated one year effort goes down the drain or goes one year effort goes to dogs you should not allow that to happen once you are tensed up it's gone while taking the exam and how, you may ask so how to control the tension how to be composed how to remain cool remember imagine you have spent six months or one year your preparation six months preparation one year preparation a lot of information you must have gathered a lot of hard work and efforts and information inputs definitely if you find the paper tough it is a tough paper you have to give your best and uh, spontaneously immediately you have to change your mindset this seems to be a tough paper i'll give my best think that way and uh, you see five questions not able to answer then uh, you are tensed up you it results that's what happens silly mistakes and the the worst part when it comes to this panicking or getting agitated imagine english then you have quant then you have reasoning the impact spills over you mess up this section the impact of that negative impact you are going to have on the second one the third one so it is very dangerous it it is like chain reaction not at all uh, advisable good or bad remain composed give your best there ends the matter when you come out you think of the paper the exam that's what your attitude should be that otherwise one year why should you waste one year effort hard work one year hard work not acceptable easy to say but difficult to implement those who implement definitely they become successful what is the spelling of particular is it e or a particular particular person thank you very much no no you all deserve success i know a lot of students come here every day attend the session every day and uh, otherwise also there's otherwise also they spend a lot of time in my opinion you are all hard workers and also serious about your success you all deserve success you will get success only thing your mindset your attitude being uh, very determined these factors matter a lot cacophony it goes with music means what not harmonious not harmonious noisy discordant cacophony it goes with music do remember music a lot of disturbance we say cacophony and exacerbate an important word make something worse make something worse already bad you make it worse then we use the word exacerbate this has been given in different competitive exams an important word and particular specific flammable flammable inflammable both mean one and the same usually inflammable people think opposite no flammable inflammable what is the meaning something that catches fire within no time catch fire something that catches fire within no time flammable you can also use the word inflammable aggravate yes of course exacerbate aggravate please go to the next one intervention ludicrous nymphomaniac pessimism things should not be allowed to become worse that too when it comes to giving your best in a particular exam non combustible yes all correct 
intervention, intervene, to interfere, to sort out a problem. And ludicrous means something that is ridiculous, not acceptable. Nymphomaniac, a woman with excess sexual desire. Nymphomaniac, an important word. They have given under one word substitutes many a time in different competitive exams. Pessimism, a person with a negative attitude, we use pessimism. So all are correct, nothing wrong. And the last one, planetarium, ridiculous, ludicrous, ridiculous. Exorbitant, very di different, exuberant, enthusiastic and exorbitant, unreasonably priced, exacerbate to make something worse. In a way, confusing, but different meanings, they go with different uh, context. Exacerbate goes with a situation, make something worse. Exuberance goes with uh, individuals, showing a lot of enthusiasm, passion. And exorbitant goes with products and services, very expensive or unreasonably priced. Planetarium, planet, what is the spelling? Planet, how do you find out if you know the spelling of the word planet? Obviously, then you can get it right. But here there is a, better to write uh, uh, planetarium. Planetarium, N-E-T-A-R-I-U-M. Ridiculous, something that is silly, not acceptable. Severance to cut off sever to cut off stop something cut off something and travels travel across travels means what travel across all these words are right no problem as such scramble sentence i have brought uh, i think i have brought for the first time under pressure again these are not easy but options are there then it becomes easy uh, read, it's only one sentence, the words are shuffled. Then we call the sentence a scrambled sentence. Exorbitant gold prices, exorbitant oil prices, fuel prices. Exactly, cut off severance. Please try to get the correct order, scrambled sentence. All the words, you have to get one sentence. It's all about man. Man does not eat raw meat. So which one is the correct order? Man, how many options begin? This is ruled out. Man does not. BD, man does not. So eat raw meat. Answer is the fifth option. Man does not eat raw meat. Yes. Please go to question number two. Different one glance, you should be able to get the correct uh, order and you should be able to guess the sentence. Go to the second one. It is there are. So it has to start with there. How many options with uh, B ruled out? Either the first one or the fourth one. There are BF. Even here you have BF. There are different kinds of vehicles. So BFA, answer is the fourth one. This is a good one. What is the answer? Question number three. There are different kinds of vehicles. Yes, obviously. It is a second one. Swadeshi is an attitude of mind. Swadeshi is what? An attitude of mind. Answer is the second option. 
Are we running out of time? It's already nine. Please answer quickly. Oh, welcome. Who is this? Bakshi Saab. Hope you are enjoying and getting enriched. Man used Flintstone to make tools would have been better. So what is the answer next one? Man used Answer should be the first one. Man used a print stone to make tool. Tools would have been better. This is rather easy. The next one. Answer should be the first one or the third one. EF. Exercise. F. Exercise. EF. No, I don't. BE. Yes, it should be. Ex everyday exercise helps keep good health. Answer is a third option. No, 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 third option. Everyday exercise. Here it has been used as an adjective. And the clue for you, everyday one word, it is an adjective. Everyday two words, an adverb. Answer is a third option. Oh, we still have. Shall I continue? You have to answer questions related to uh, idioms. Then you have editorial words. Idioms, you try to answer quickly. It's already three past nine. Everyday exercise helps keep good health. Exactly, Naresh and Sai Arvind. To reach adulthood, you have got in today's editorial. Continue, fine. Come of age. So what is the answer here to reach adulthood? Come of age. E. Period of prosperity. Easy to answer. Golden age. A long period of time. This is a new one. Dog's age. Too old to perform as well as before. Over the hill. Answer is C. To allow older people to go first or to go before. Age before beauty. Age before beauty. E, A, B, C, D. This is the correct order. Now let us go to the last one. Try to respond. Donkey's ears also. Yes, who is this? Kiran Kumar. Very good. Let us go to the editorial vocabulary quickly. Parts of speech you can think later. Uh, toxic. Toxic means what? Poisonous. I'll write. And try to respond quickly. Applause. Applause means what? Appreciate. Approval or appraise or praise by clapping. G. Altercation. Argument, noisy argument in public, J. Neo means new, A. Eponymous, after a person or a thing, named after a person or thing, H. Come of age, become fully established or mature. Closeted, secretive, where is this secretive? Keeping something secret, especially related to being a gay or related words you have to think of. 
So C is the answer. Exquisite. Exquisite here. Extremely beautiful. Nomad. One who travels from one place to another place. No permanent home. Nomad. A, B, C, D, E. Here it should be F. Delightful means what? Charming. That's all for today. Thanks for being with me till five past nine. Have a nice day. Do remember to subscribe and share and join the Telegram group. All that you have to do after the session, go to the description of the video and click on the link. After that, you don't have to do anything. You will be at the receiving end. After the session, I'll provide the PDF. Try to work on important words and expressions.